All right, good morning, everyone. This is Jeff Scott welcoming you to day 11 of the Rankin Technical College online AWD 1100 C Sharp programming class for the summer 2023 semester. Now we're in day 11. And it may not sound like much, but I'm going to show you a few things today where hopefully at least you're going to be able to see how far we've come in just 10 or 11 days. So the idea for the next week is today we're going to cover chapter seven, which is called exception handling. If you don't know what exceptions are, well, first, you probably didn't read the chat. And second, you'll have a better idea after class today. Then since this is the last time we meet this week monday we will go over chapter eight which is called collections and arrays tuesday we'll do some of the problems that will be assigned for chapters seven and eight and wednesday we will take and then go over a pretest for chapter seven and eight and one week from today you will have your next hands-on test hot three on chapters seven and eight. All right. Now your chapters four through six written tests, homework and labs. And again, I don't know why I did that, but I did. There are no labs for chapters four to six. So it's just written tests and homework. By Sunday, this Sunday. The fourth, they were originally due yesterday, but I moved that out because of the fact that we had more time to take our test on chapters four through six. One week from Sunday, the 11th of June, your chapters seven and eight tests will be due. All right, now I mentioned before that we've actually come a pretty long way in 10 days, and I want to show you what I mean. So I made an empty folder here that I just called chapters seven to 11, and I'm going to start filling it up right now. All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new project. And the first one that I do create will be a console app. In fact, I'm going to create a few console apps to begin today. All right, and they're going to be very, very simple. They're actually going to be similar to stuff we've looked at in the past, but we're going to build upon them. All right, so they're all going to be miles per gallon program. So I'm going to call this first one MPG. console 01. I'm going to put them into this folder, chapter 07 to 11. All right. Again, it's empty. And I'll just call the solution name chapters 7 11. It's a little bit different. All right, and click create. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the wrong way of doing things. When I say that, this is what we did when we started in this class. All right, just again to show you how far we've come. I'm going to do a using static system.console because that's a little easier way to write this stuff. But if you remember a mere 10 or 11 days ago or class periods ago, we were writing this. We were writing something like this. Um, let's say decimal miles, decimal gallons, decimal MPG. All right, so we were doing this. So we were coming in here and we were saying, um, right, enter miles, driven. And then we said miles equal, and we can use a convert dot to decimal, we can use a decimal dot try parse, etc. But either, it, regardless of how we do it, it's fine. All right, so there is enter the miles driven. All right, so another right, let's put a started out with a, a so it's on a blank line so enter gallons used and 
get, oops, not felons, gallons equal convert to decimal read line. OK, and then finally, MPG. Equal. Miles divided by gallons. And then we would do like a, one last right line at the end. Where we would say. Miles driven. We'll say here miles dot two string. Let's put everything to two decimal places. All right. And then we're going to add to that. Gallons used, the number of gallons of gas that you used. And then finally, whoops, then finally. Miles, we'll just put it this way, gallon. It'll look at it nice that way. Everything I'm doing too, I'm going to save. All right, we'll make a GitHub. I don't have a repo for this, but we'll make a repo later. All right, and then finally, I'm going to do a read line so it doesn't fly off the page. So what do we have here? We're doing absolutely no error checking. We're telling the person to enter miles driven. We're telling the person to enter gallons used. We're dividing the miles that they drove by the gallons that they used. Then we're just going to write everything out. That's it. And it only run once because we don't have any. Um, we don't have any loop or anything in here. So let's see if at least this works. So we're going to do a save all on this and I'm going to run it. Well, it went like that, so which is good. So something I didn't like in here. Oh, there it is. All right, so enter miles driven, let's say 367.8. And our gallons used 12.34. Miles driven, gallons used, miles per gallon. Pretty cool. Okay, no problem. Except when we first started, we just took for granted that the user knew what she or he was doing. All right, as far as what they put, put in there. All right, what do I mean? Well, let's run it again. Now I'm going to leave it blank and hit enter. <clears throat> and you'll notice I'm getting a system.format exception. So I'm going to I'm going to keep track of these exceptions that I'm getting. <clears throat> so the first one that you saw right there was system.format exception. Okay? Well, there's the first one. All right. So if we run it again, and actually right now it's stuck because we got that exception and we didn't handle it. We're going to talk about how to handle that in just a bit. All right, so if we run it again and we put in hello, we get the same error, system.format exception. Input string was not in the correct format. Okay, all right. Well, what other kinds of exceptions can we get? You know that if we run this and we do put in a valid value. All right, but but if we put in zero. Now we get a system divide by zero exception. All right, so that's the second exception that we got. So that's a couple things that we have to account for. Now we could go and do the same thing we did before in what I mean is we can come in here and put in a number and then put in nothing here, and we'll get that same system format error. Or just like we did before, we can put in a number here. Not that, a number, hit enter, all right? And if we put in something not numeric, again, we get that. So those are the two exceptions that I have seen. Now, 
even though the program will work, if I miles driven, if I put in negative 567, and for the gallons used, I put in 45, I still get answers. They're all negative, but I still get answers. What I'm getting to here is when we first started out, all right, the way we handled errors was by not handling them. That's exactly what we did. We assumed that the person was going to enter in valid data. We assume that. And that's about the worst assumption that you can make. All right? Because you're assuming if you are writing a program for someone else, that they're going to do what you expect them to do. Now, it's one thing if you're writing a program for yourself and you know, well, there's never going to be a problem with this, but that's not typically the way it's going to be. All right. So this is where we started. Let me close this. OK, and let's cr quickly create another. So I'm going to create another new project. Again, it's going to be a console. Again, it is going to be a dot C or a C sharp, same way we've been doing this. I'm going to call this one MPG console 02. All right, and click create because we started to get a little bit better. And what I mean is exactly what I'm about to show you. So again, I'll put a using here static system. System dot console here. All right. And well, one of the other things that we started doing right away was we started to modularize. So we're going to modularize what we just did. But before we do that, let's put in a couple constants. You learned about those as well. So here I'm going to both declare and initialize my program constants. And let's make four of them. So const the decimal, the minimum miles. So we're going to assume this is the minimum number of miles somebody can drive. And I'm going to set that equal to 1m. Another constant, the decimal. These are all going to be decimals. Max miles. And we're going to assume the most gallons that you could drive is 1,000. All right. So the minimum number of gallons or miles that you're going to drive is one. The maximum is a thousand. All right. Then we're going to have another const decimal. And just so it lines up, I call it min gal. So the minimum number of gallons that you can put in. Again, we're going to put in one M. And our last constant, const decimal, max gals. And we're going to set that equal to 100 M. So we are assuming right here that the fewest miles that someone can drive are one. The most miles that someone can drive are a thousand. The least amount of gas that you can use is one gallon, and the most that you can use is a hundred gallons. Maybe it's a big semi. 18 wheeler truck that's got a 100 gallon tank or whatever. All right. So those are just things that we are assuming. All right. But then the next thing that we started going into, I shouldn't even say the next thing, but one of the things we started to go into was how to modularize our program. All right. We started talking about variables. So the first thing I like to be able to do is to run this program whenever I want to. So I'm going to have a Boolean in here that I'm going to call again, and I'm going to set it equal to true. All right, and that'll be my program continue variable. OK. Then I'm going to have another decimal here that I'll call miles driven. A little better name. I won't even put a comment there because it's probably pretty obvious, all right, that miles driven, I, if I put a comment there, I put the word miles in the space and then the word driven, all right? So let's make another one and we'll call it gallons used. 
Same kind of thing. And we'll make one more decimal. And we'll call this. Just want this to be really make sense to anybody. It'll be called miles per gallon. And now with that miles per gallon, that will actually be here. Miles driven. Divided by gallons used. Pretty obvious stuff, at least I think it is so far. My hope is that it is. All right, so those are our variables. And you'll notice I'm declaring all of my constants outside of main. So they're program constants. I can use them anywhere without having to pass them. However, I'm not declaring any variables outside of main up here. These are constants. My variables are all local in here. So if I want to use these, I'm going to have to pass them into routines. All right. So we set this thing called again equal to true. And the next thing that I'm going to do, move this down and move this over. And I'm going to move this over just so I got a lot of screen space. There we go. I mean, they're constants, so we don't have to worry about a toolbox or a properties window. We really don't. All right, so let's come in here and we're going to say while again. So again, we're going to set this up in a loop. All right, and start to think about what do we want to do here? Well, we want to input our miles driven. We want to input our gallons used. We want to do the math to divide our miles driven by our gallons used, and we want to print everything out. All right, so that's four things in there that we want to do. Finally, finally, we want to ask the pro person if they want to run the program again. OK, so let's go do all that. First thing is every time we have a new program run, we'll clear the screen so it'll look nicer. So I'm just going to do a clear there. Now I'm going to say miles driven equal and I'm going to call validate miles driven. Now you know this already or you should. I'm going to quickly write in here. I'm going to write uh, four routines, five routines, but I'm going to get errors for each one of them because I haven't written them down below here yet. So that's going to be miles driven. Gallons. Used. Be equal to validate gallons used. All right. Miles per gallon. Is going to be equal to calculate MPG and it will need the miles driven. And the gallons used. All right, then we're going to want to print all or print everything and that'll be the miles driven. The gallons used. And the miles per gallon. Finally, we're going to ask the user if they want to run the program again. And we'll call a routine called run program again. Now notice all these errors that we're getting here. We do not have a routine called validate miles driven. We do not have a routine called get validate gallons used. We do not have a routine called calculate MPG. We do not have a routine called print all. We do not have a routine called run program again. So other than this first one that I'm about to write, I'm going to comment out the rest of these. And if you remember, I can highlight all of them. Go up here into my tool, into my uh, toolbar, not toolbox, toolbar. Click that, and now they're all commented out. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to validate my miles driven. Now, as far as m validating that miles driven, think about this. All right. We are passing nothing in here. All right, so we are going to have something that's going to be called miles driven, just like this with paren paren. But whatever I figure out for miles driven has got to be stuffed into here, which is a decimal. So in other words, I'm going to come in here and say static because it's working directly with main. Oops, and I don't, I'm sorry. I got to do it outside of main. So right here, 
static, decimal, validate, miles, driven. Now you'll see I got rid of that error because there's now a, a routine by that name, but, but there's a problem right here. And that is I'm not returning anything. If I wanted to totally get rid of those errors, for now at least, I could just return 0M. Now I have no errors. It's not doing a flaming thing really, but returning zero. All right. Now what you're going to notice is these validate miles driven and the validate um, gallons used are almost going to be the same exact routine. Could we have written them as one routine? The answer is yes, but there are times you might want to write a little bit more code on purpose because this routine, all it's doing is validating that right there. When we get done with this one, we're going to write that one. And that's all that's going to do. Then we're going to write this one. And that's all that that's going to do. Then we're going to print. And that's all that's going to do. Then we're going to ask if they wanted to run again. So we're really trying to modularize here. All right. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get back to, I'm going to have an error here, but don't worry about it. We'll get rid of the error in just a moment. But I'm going to say bool result. All right. What is the result? The result is going to be me attempting to convert. It's going to be me attempting to convert. All right. Whatever I inputted into a decimal value. All right. So I'm going to create two more variables here. MD is miles driven, so I'm going to have a miles driven string. And I'm going to also have a decimal. And it's a miles driven. We'll call it deck for decimal. All right, so right now. I've got three variables. They all have the green underline because right now none of them are doing anything. And remember, green is OK, but it's giving me warnings basically saying Hey, you got these variables here that you're not using for anything. So let's start using them. Now, what we've done in the past always has been something like this. I want to be able to say, I want a message to come up that says, please enter miles driven between, and I want them to know that it's between one and 1000. Now I'm, I'm going to get all those errors, but this is this is what I want to print out. All right, so I could come in here and say this, right? This is the way we've done it previously, and I could come in and say, please enter miles driven between, all right, one and 1000, and that works just fine. All right, there's not a problem with that. If I run the program now, I'm going to get that. It's going to flip right off the screen because I don't have a read line, but it works. All right, now I want to show you another way, actually two more ways that we can write this same thing. All right, I could also have said write and then said please enter miles driven between and then I can say here plus, I'm going to put it over two lines, min miles plus and max miles. All right. Just to show you, just to show you that this does work, I'll put a read line in here. Now the program is far from done, but I want you to see that this right here and this right here are going to print out the same thing. Let's let's put this on a new line here. All right, just so you see them both. OK, so file save all. Let's run it. And before I do. I have to come in and set. 
that to my startup project. Plus, I'm going to get an error right here because I'm not returning anything. So let's come in here and we'll just again, like we had, I'm going to return 0M. Again, the program is very, 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 very far from done. All right, but let's see if this right here on line 38 and what's on lines 39 and 40 print out the same exact thing or not. So I'm going to do a save all and run it. And you can see, I guess I forgot the colon there, but they're printing out the exact same thing. So you might say that's just fine and dandy. Why did you even show us that? It's kind of stupid or whatever. Again, first of all, I can come back here and add plus and put a colon in there. Now they will print out the exact same thing. So you'll notice there they are exactly the same. All right. So again, fine, dandy, Jeff. Good. Why did you even show us this? Well, here we're hard coding these values in. If the maximum and minimum change, if they do change sometime, they get bigger, smaller, whatever, I've got to remember to go back and change these. But here, if I change the values of my constants, so if I make this now, let's say that the minimum miles is now 10 and the maximum miles is now 500, as an example, and I save this, now they're not going to print out the same thing. I have to remember in this case to go back and fix those. Where here I don't. All right. So the the second example that I just showed you there, the second example, this one is known as being more extensible. All right. And if you say, well, what the heck is extensible? Kind of like, you know, maybe you had this when you were a little kid. I remember playing with this when I was a little kid with my brother. And that is silly putty. You can kind of stretch it to make it do things maybe you wouldn't think it would normally do. All right. Now, so this is probably the worst way right here. Okay. Because again, we're hard coding values in there. This is a better way. But now I want to bring bring to your attention something that is discussed in chapter seven. So I'm going to copy this. All right, now I'm going to comment this one out. All right, and I'm going to paste it back in again. Why? You know, why are you doing that? Because wouldn't it be nice? At least in my opinion, and you may not agree with this, but wouldn't it be nice? If instead of having to, you know, end a quote plus this plus quote plus this plus, wouldn't it be nice if we could put everything on one line and not have to worry about breaking out into quotes and whatever? And guess what? You can. All right. Those of you who were last semester in the AWD 1000 class, all right, the web development technologies, you remember template literals. Well, this is the way you do it in this language. You put a dollar sign at the beginning, just like that. And now I'm going to change this around so you can see it. Don't worry, it's going to have to be, I'm going to have to make a few changes here, but we'll fix all of it in a minute. All right, now. I'm not going to run this because if I ran it now, it would literally say, please enter miles driven between min miles and max miles. It wouldn't put the numbers in there. If I want to use the numbers, I have to put them within curly braces. Like this. Well, we've got two spaces here. Let's cut it to one. Let's cut it to one. And we don't want any spaces there. So notice what we've done by using this literal. And I don't believe that's what they call it in this language, but we'll see in just a moment. Now, 
if this works, and I do want to put a blank space there, but if this works, it'll look just like it did before. It'll say, please enter miles driven between one and 1,000. So let's see if indeed it does. And there you go. All right. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you there. All right. So we've got this in here. And now we're going to say miles driven STR equal read line, console just read line. So that's going to take whatever we put in there. And that will not fail because we're putting it into a string value. But what we want to do next is we want to attempt to parse that value that we're putting in there. We want to attempt to parse it into or put it into. All right. A decimal. So I'm going to say in here result equal. Decimal. Decimal dot try parse. And this is what we're doing. Uh, don't worry about this. Let's get rid of that line for now. So you learned kind of the poorest way of doing this. You learned a better way of doing this. And now you learned a new way of doing this. All right. Whatever we put in here. So let's just, just say I put in 510. Then 510, not the number 510, but the string 510 is going to go into here. Then I'm going to attempt to convert that string into a decimal value. If I can do it successfully, it's going to go into MD deck and result will be true. If I don't do it successfully, if I left it blank or I put something non numeric, then result is going to be false. And there won't be anything in here. So just make sure we got something in here. Let's set that equal to 0M. All right. And even though a lot of people would say it's unnecessary, it's redundant, I'm going to do that as well. All right. I can, I can handle the redundant. All right. So let's see if this works. Okay. We haven't done really much of anything with it yet, but that's okay. So save all. And please enter. So if I said 510, that worked. That's good. You know, I can put now let's run it again, but let's leave it blank. Oh. And the reason it's not blowing up is because I've got that in those loops. All right. So since it's failing and we're not doing anything with the failure. All right. Let's do something with the failure. So if it fails, so if not result. And again, what have we been doing in the past? Writing a message. All right. And but one thing we can do is we can set miles driven decimal to a value in here. So I'm going to just put in here a right line. And I'm going to say. Illegal. Illegal. Non numeric input. And then I'm going to set this MD deck. I can set it equal to anything I want. I'm a one. And it's just an arbitrary thing I decided to do. All right. So let's come in here. Let's save it. Run it again. And I'll put in here 510. And it's not doing anything. That's OK. Let's run it again and let's put in this. Now we get illegal non numeric input. It's set it to one. And now it's going to ask us to do it again. So if we put in something that's blank or non numeric, now it is being handled. All right. Now, we had said before we want the number that gets put in to be between one and a thousand. We're not handling that right now. All right. 
we're doing this. So if this is the case, if this is true, input was non-numeric, all right? <clears throat> I'm gonna come in here and put in an else, and it's gonna say else if the miles driven was less than miles, or it was greater than the maximum miles. So in other words, I'm going to perform a range check. I'm making sure that it falls between these two values. All right, if that's the case, I'm gonna print out something else. It's not so much that it's illegal, um, I could say illegal, but I'm gonna put here out of range input. All right. Okay. If I get down to here, then I know the input was numeric and was between one, how about this, between min miles and max miles, or in other words, one and 1,000. I know that. So all I want to do now in this case then is return MD deck. So it either is going to have this value will either have a one in it because we left that empty. Let's make this a, let's make this a zero and we'll leave the other one a one. OK, so this is a zero if it was empty. It's a one if it was out of range and otherwise. It's going to return the actual number. Let's see if we can tell whether or not that worked. All right, I want to see if we can tell whether or not that worked. So I'm going to come in here after I did this, and I'm going to put a right line in here. And it's going to say the miles driven has a value, value of, and then we'll put in miles driven. But let's not do it like this. We just learned a shortcut for this. Let's put a dollar sign here. Let's get rid of this. And then let's put miles driven inside of curly braces. Like that. All right. So I'm going to run this three times. The first time I'm going to put nothing in there and it should come back and say the miles driven is zero. Then I'm gonna run it and let's run it four times. We'll put in something less than one to see if we get a one, then something more than a thousand to see if we get a one. Then we'll put in a valid number and see if we get that number. All right, so file save all. So I'm gonna leave it blank. And unfortunately it, it did the clear. That's what is doing this, this clear that we put in right here. So let's get rid of the clear for now. I'll put it back in in a minute. So we're gonna run it, we're gonna put in a zero. Illegal out of range. And it says the miles driven has a value of one. How did it get that one? Well, it got it here. Right, I'm not sure why that worked like that, but it did. Okay, let's run it again. Let's put in some garbage. And you can see it has a value of zero. So it is handling the non-numeric input correctly. Now let's put in here 510. And if it's handling this correctly, it should not give me an error message. And it should say the miles driven has a value of 
510. And that's exactly what it says. So all of that's working. All right. Every bit of that's working. And, and we have, uh, we have now validated our miles driven. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with gallons used. I'm going to take this line and comment that line out, that right line statement. So I'm going to say here, gallons used equal. And I'm getting the error message because we haven't written that yet. Let's take and copy just so you don't have to watch me do a bunch of typing. I'm going to come in here and copy everything we just did. I'm going to copy everything that we just did into our new routine. But I'm going to change the name to validate gallons used. Now that error up above should be gone, and it is. All right, so we have to make some changes in here now. Let's change this from MDSDR for miles driven to GUSDR for gallons used. And we'll change our message to gallons used. And that's between one and 100. That's the crummy way of writing it. This is the better way, but not still the way we're going to use. And that'll have to be between min gals and max gals. And then let's do it the better way. So please enter gallons used between min gals. And spelled it wrong. Max scales. All right, and this is GU for gallons used. All right, so that'll handle that. Then we want to try to parse it, but again, it's GU STR that we're parsing and we're putting it into GU, and the GU is just gallons used. All right, so here. We're going to run the same tests. So I'm going to say gallons used here and here and here. And like we did before, I will put a right line in here like we had. But now for that right line, I'm going to put the gallons used was. I'll need a read line on the bottom here because if I don't, it's going to uh, run right off the page. Okay. And it may not, it may be okay without it, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right. So here's enter my miles driven. Again, we'll put in 510. For our gallons used, I'm going to leave it blank. And it says illegal, non numeric input, and it gave me zero. All right. Ask me for miles driven again. <clears throat> gallons used. All right, so that's working. Let's do one more thing. Let's put in something that's out of range. We get a one. And if we put in something too big, we again get a one. Everything's working. That's good. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that read line. And now, and I'm going to comment out this right line here. I'm leaving everything that's in here. All right. 
trying to separate it out so you can see everything that I'm doing here. So we've now handled validating miles driven. So this is our function to validate the inputted miles driven. OK, and copy that, bring that down to here. And this is the function to validate the inputted gallons used. All right, now once we get to this point, because this is what we want to do next, is we want to call calculate MPG. And we know we've got a valid value in for gallons used, we've got a valid value in for miles driven. Right? I'm getting that error because of course we haven't written this yet. Okay, so let's come down. And down here, I'm just going to put in. Function to calculate. Miles per gallon. All right, and I'm going to say here static. Decimal. Calculate miles per gallon. Okay, and let's just use simpler names here. We'll just say decimal. M for miles and decimal G for gallons. And all we have to do is return M divided by G. That's it. Miles divided by gallons. All right. But let's make sure this is working. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to put in here a right line. And I'm going to put use my dollar sign that we just learned about. And I'm going to say miles equal. And we want to put in here miles driven. And we'll put a backslash N in there and we'll say gallons equal. And here we'll have gallons used. So what I oh not validate. Don't know what happened here, but that should actually this should be M for miles driven right there. And this should just be a G. There we go. All right. Now we are returning M divided by G, but let's do this. Before we return anything, let's come in here and say decimal MPG equal. M divided by G. So let's do one more right line in here. In fact, let's just do it like this. So there's our miles, there's our gallons, and then we'll put another backslash N and we'll say MPG, MPG equal MPG. Whoops. So now we should have everything in there. OK, and I'm just going to return. MPG. All right, now I don't know if this is going to flip right off the screen or not. Just to be sure, let's put a read line in here anyway. All right. Again, arbitrary value here, 345, 23. All right, so miles, gallons, and it does go in there evenly. Let's run it one more time and we'll put in something that won't. All right, so I could have formatted that because that's quite a few decimal places right there. All right, so I can come in here, even though this is inside of curly braces, I can say m dot two string, and I can put in here n two, and I can do the same thing in here dot two string n two, and I can do the same thing here. Okay, so dot two string. 
N2. Now that'll now I think at least it'll look a little nicer. The output will. So let's look. So 519, 14. There you go. All right. Now, the only thing we're not doing in here that we had shown. All right, so what we're doing in here that we uh, we're not doing. Is this. Print all and then asking them if they want to do it again. Well, we sort of already have this print all, but let's write another routine for print all. So we're going to get an error because we haven't written it yet. And it will need miles driven, gallons used, and miles per gallon. Okay, so down here, again, all I have to return here, this is an easy routine when I just write return M divided by G. There, nice, nice one line routine here. And here we'll say print out miles driven, gallons used, miles per gallon. All right, so static void because we're not returning anything. And this was called print all. And we are printing out a decimal, which is miles driven, another decimal, which is gallons used, and another decimal, which is miles per gallon. All right, now I wish I had kept what I had in here before, but I didn't, and it's okay. So let's come in here and do this. I'm going to say, that let's build an output string. Yeah, let's just do it the way we've been doing it. So we'll do another right line. And I'm going to do it just like we did before with the dollar sign. And it's going to say, all right, let's get that. There we go. And I'm just going to say here, miles equal, and that's going to be our miles driven. Again, we'll do a dot to string. MD for miles driven dot to string. N2. All right, so that's first one. Plus. That we don't need a plus backslash N. All right, and let's see. It doesn't like something that we're doing in here. Let's for now, let's get rid of this two string. I think that's what's goofing it up. So we're going to put in here miles driven. And I'm going to put in here, I'll put a backslash N and it'll work. Um, boy, gallons. And I'm going to put in here MPG. I will make this one a dot to string. See if I can at least and make that an N2. And it's to string. All right. Let's see if this does print out. So, when I'm testing like this, I'm just going to put an easy value. So, 110 miles is 100, gallons is 10, MPG is 10.00. That looks good to me. All right. So, the only thing that's left to do in here in this program, and it's been a long one, I granted, is to come in here and do the again equal run program again. So let's write that one now. 
it's not a short program. I mean, it's already up to 110 lines or so. Static. And this is actually going to have to return something. All right. This is going to return a Boolean because it's whether or not you want to run the program again. So it's run program again. It has nothing passed into it. And it's about 10 or 15 lines. But I put a string in here that I called yes or no. And I set it equal to the empty string. Then I had a character. It's the first time we're using just a single character that I called first char. And I set that equal to this, which is basically the empty string for a character. Then I'm going to have a Boolean, remember our old retval? And we're going to set that equal to true. All right. Now I'm going to put a write statement in here and it's going to say, would you like to run the program again? And then put in here, yes or no. Okay. All right. Then that value of yes or no, or no, is going to be read line. But just to show you something we really, again, haven't really done before, we can trim that, read line dot trim. So what's the problem? The problem is, what if the person enters the word yes instead of a Y? If all we do is check for a Y, if all we do is check for a Y, we're hosed. It'll fail because we put in Y E S. What about checking for an upper or lowercase Y? We're going to fix both those right now. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say first char equals yes or no zero. That's just grabbing the first character. So that's the first character of yes or no string all right if if this doesn't equal a y we don't want to continue so retval is now false. And then we want to return retval. Now, I'm going to explain this. Okay, I am going to explain this. But if it doesn't make sense, you will have the code for you to take a look at what we're doing here. You will have the code. So it's going to say, Would you like to run the program again? Let's say I type in there, yes the word yes. All right, then yes or no will contain Y-E-S. Then I want just the first character of Y-E-S, so that'll give me the Y. Then I'm going to take that character and uppercase it and convert it into a string and say, does it equal an uppercase Y? If it does not, I'm going to set my return value to false. So if I set that return value to false, again as false, so I will fall out of the loop. We should be all done now. You should be able to run this. All right. So file, save all. 510, 14. There it is. Would I like to run it again? Yes. So it's going to let me run it again. 342, 10. Okay, would like to run it again? No, I'm done. Now, why did I take the time to go through all of this with you? The answer to that question is, all right, the first example that we did, we assumed there were no errors in input. 
That was the simplest, that the first example that we went through where we put everything in main. Now, what we're doing is we're never allowing bad input into the system. I want to say that again. We are never allowing bad input into the system. All right. And you may or may not remember this, but one of the things I mentioned earlier is there are three ways. Let's say that again. There are three ways that you can handle errors. We've already looked at two of them. Number one is to do nothing and hope they don't happen. I call that the ostrich approach, just like an ostrich hides its head in the sand and hopes that the world will kind of go by it. That's what we're doing. That's what we did <clears throat> in the first example. And what you saw by doing that is we could have a format exception or a divide by zero exception. All right. Well, in this second example, the one we just completed here, <clears throat> we never allow bad data into the system from the get go. We never have bad data because again, if we run this again and we put in bad data, so I'm going to leave this blank and this blank. All right, well, look, attempt to divide by zero. We get another divide by zero exception. All right, so I guess we should have checked that. All right. So what I'm going to do is put in here, if G, which is our gallons, equal zero, all right, what we'll put in here is, is right line, illegal attempt to divide by zero. Now, I don't have to put the dollar sign there. I'm not printing out the value of any variables. But here I'm just going to return 0m. All right? And otherwise, it's going to return it. So if I run and I leave them both blank now, it gives me zero, zero, and zero. Maybe that's not the best way to handle that. There are other ways we could handle this. All right. But the point is this we're never allowing bad data into the program from the get go. All right. All right, so there's the second one. So let me do one more file, save all. We're going to write this one more as one more console. Then we're going to move movies. <clears throat> so I'm going to add another new project in here. Again, it'll be a console. Again, it'll be csharp.net console. And this one will be MPG console 03. All right. Now I probably could go and steal a lot of stuff from here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to write this from scratch. Again, I'm going to get rid of all this and have my using static system dot console just like that. All right. And now I'm going to write it and I'm going to use what the main thrust of chapter seven in our text is. That is, I'm going to show you exception handling. Now, when you work with exceptions, they're exceptions to the norm. So to say that there is an exception in your program is a bad thing. All right. So why do we even go through this? Well, it there's a there's more than one reason, but I'm going to give you two of the biggest reasons. Number one, if you're working on a big project, 
And I'm talking about a project that's thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of lines long. You won't be working on it alone. You'll be working on it with other people. All right. And there's a chance that it could be set up so that bad data was allowed to be put into the system. We just kept it out ourselves before. But what if bad data is put in? It's already there. Well, now we want to handle it. So that's one reason. The second reason is some people think it's cleaner to do it this way. I'm not going to say yes, no, good, bad, indifferent, or whatever. But I am going to come in and I am going to write a program now that's going to look in many ways, in many ways, it's going to look similar to what we just did, but it's going to be longer. And it's going to have exception handling in it. But when we start, it's going to start in the same way. All right, what do I mean? Well, remember what we just did here. I am going to bring this up here. I may want to copy a little bit of stuff. All right, let's do this first. All right, so let's copy in those constants. So declare and initialize program constants. That's good. And let's go. All right. These routines haven't been written yet. All those right lines I put in there before to test, I'm going to get rid of them now. All right. Because I want to be able to just concentrate on the new stuff that we're about to do. All right. So the first thing that you see in there is I do have an error because validate miles driven has not been written yet. We're going to write that, all right? But the way that we're going to write it now is we're going to remember, we had this thing before that was called the format exception. We, the only time we get the divide by zero exception, that's on the gallons used. This is the exception that we're going to get if we put in zero or something non-numeric, all right? so. I'm going to come in here and write this right now. It's not going to require any parameters and it must return a decimal because we're stuffing it into miles driven. So let's come in here and key in static decimal validate miles driven. All right, that error is now gone. I've got the new one because I'm not returning anything yet, all right? Now, we're going to still have, like we did before, a string called miles driven, str, and a decimal that'll be miles driven deck, exactly like we did before. But it's going to start changing now. When you write a program that utilizes exception handling, you use what's called a try catch block. All right, I'm going to write in it in just a moment. In the try block, you put in one or more lines of code that can conceivably fail. In the catch block, you handle the different failure possibilities. All right, this is all going to be explained. We're going to do this, then we're going to go back and we're going to write this program twice, rewrite it twice as a GUI. Then we're going to jump into chapter seven. All right, it was my hope that by showing you all this first, that it's going to make a lot more sense when we jump into it, into the chapter itself, and we'll be able to go through the chapter faster. Plus, you're going to have five examples of different programs. Now, granted, it's for a fairly simplistic 
miles per gallon program, but you've got five examples. You'll have three consoles, one of which has no error handling whatsoever, one which never allows bad data into the system, and then this one, which allows bad data into the system, but handles it with exception handling. Then we will go back and we will rewrite this as a GUI app. It'll be simple. The GUI app is going to look like this. All right, it's going to have three labels, three text boxes, and three buttons. All right. So I'm going to put in here a try block, and I'm going to put in this is the stuff that can conceivably fail. So under try, you put it inside of curly braces. Now it's giving me an error right now because I don't have any catch. We'll fix that in a moment, but I'm going to put in here right. And we're going to use the same thing that we had before that said. These enter miles driven between this and this, so I'm going to grab this exact same thing that we had before. I just don't feel like typing in an, a ton of the extra stuff if we don't have to. All right. Exactly the same as we had before. There's no difference. Now we're going to attempt to convert it. We can go do a convert dot to decimal. We can do a decimal dot try parse. Okay. Let's do a convert here. So I'm going to say M deck. So if I did the try parse, I would need to put in a Boolean here that would give me that. So, but this is another way of doing it. So I'm going to say MD deck miles driven decimal equal convert convert dot to decimal MD STR. Now this can fail. It can fail if we put nothing in here. It can fail if we put a non-numeric value in there. And if you remember when it fails, it gives us that format exception right there. So I'm going to try to catch that format exception. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it FE, which is short for format exception. All right. And then I'm going to do a right line here. But rather than writing out my message, which I can do, I can write on any message here I want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out just the word error. All right. And then I'm going to put in the system message, fe.message. That's the message the system will give us. And a couple backslash ends just so you know to, so we can see what's going on. Finally, I'm going to go in and I'm going to set MD deck, MD deck equal to one. All right. Now eventually I'm going to want to come in here and I'm going to want to return MD deck. All right, I'm going to want to return that. So all my errors are now gone. Let's give this a value of zero. All right. So let's run it. It's by no means is it done. But let's, oops, and I have to go and set my startup project to MPG console three. There we go. Now when I hit enter, it's jumping right through there because we've got that clear statement and I didn't put in here a read line, so let me try that. So I'm putting in a read line. Error, input string was not in a correct format. I put the word error there. This is the system message. 
I will get the same error if I put in this. And if I put in a number, it worked. All right. Now, if you remember, so this try, all this worked. When it worked, it just returned it. But what happens, what happens if we put in a number that's greater than this or less than this or greater than this? All right. Well, we can even throw our own exceptions. That's kind of neat. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to say if MD deck is less than min miles or it's greater than max miles, I'm going to tell it to throw a new argument out of range exception. Okay, well, if I've got that, I better handle it. So I'm going to catch an argument out of range exception. I can call it whatever I want. Notice this was FE for format exception. This will be AOORE, argument out of range exception. And I'm going to do the same thing I did here. So if this time I'll return zero, make that zero instead of one. It just I'm just making that up. And this will have to be not FE, but that. All right. So now you've already seen this, but when I put in nothing. So when I put in nothing, I get that input string not in the correct format. If I put in this, I get that. Now though, if I put in something specified argument was out of the range of valid values, okay? And I should get the same thing if I put in something that's too big. Okay, great. But if I put in something that's valid, I'm hunky-dory. So now, now I have handled everything in here, but I did it with exception handling. Let's go to this one, and this will be validate gallons used. So let's again, just so you don't have to see me copy a ton, me copy that, or I'm sorry, so you don't have to see me type a ton. And this one will be validate gallons used, And this MD STR will be a GU for gallons used. And this deck will be a GU deck. So I'm gonna have to make a bunch of changes in here and I'll make them, you can watch. So this will now say gallons used. And this will be min gals and max gals. Again. GU, 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 min gals, GU, max gals. All right. GU, GU and GU. Now, one thing is when I put in something out of range, I don't want to set that equal to zero. Remember, eventually I'm going to want to divide by zero. I don't want to divide by zero exception. I'll set this to one as well. All right, I should now be able to get rid of that read line. Let's see.
Okay, I'm missing something. Usually it means I didn't put a, a semicolon, but let's see. Oh, I didn't return, I don't think, here. Reline, nope, that isn't it. Line 27. Validate gallons used. Validate miles driven. Validate gallons used. Used. There we go. All right. Now it says the variable miles per gallon is declared but not used. We're going to fix that in a moment. So file save all. Let's run this again. You already saw this. Input string not in the correct format. Input string not in the correct format. All right, so that one is now handling it for gallons used. All right, if it's empty, same thing. If I put in something valid here, but I put in an invalid one here, zero, same kind of thing. And if I may put in something that's too big, error. All right, it's all being handled now. So now I have incorporated exception handling into, into these first two routines. So I've now got exception handling with try catch blocks here and here. Well, that's good. Now the next one I want is my calculate MPG. So I'm going to uncomment that. I'm going to get an error because it hasn't been written yet. All right. So again, we want another static decimal. Calculate this. And again, I'm just going to just like I did before, I'll say decimal M decimal G. All right, so there's my calculate MPG. All right. And I'll have here decimal MPG equals zero M. All right. Guess what I'm going to do? Another try catch block. This will be another try. And I'm going to say MPG equal miles divided by gallons. All right. So why did I put that in there? Because I can now catch a divide by zero exception. So if somehow zero gets put into this value right here, I am now handling it. All right. So again, I'm going to put in a right line. And it'll again say, error and we will put in here divide by zero exception dot message oops and that'll be our error message and we will set miles per gallon just set it equal to zero m just so it's set to something all right and we're going to return our MPG. Now, up here where I said, hey, we can't set that equal to zero, I'm going to leave it as zero. So I'm in miles that work for miles driven. I'm going to set it equal to zero for gallons used. Zero. I'm purposely setting equal to zero. So if we enter a value that's out of range, I want to see if this is going to get caught now. Let's just put in here 345 and zero. All right, specified argument was out of range. Oops, I didn't put in another. It didn't show because my read line, where I've got my read line right now. So where is that? There it is. Let's put it down here.
There's our error. Error attempted to divide by zero. Okay. And you say, well, we don't have any output because we haven't written that routine yet. That's the print all routine. Let's write that right now. And I should be able to totally steal that because the print the print all doesn't have anything in it. Anything special in it. So there's there's the print all. Where is it? Run program again. Here's our print all, just that right line. Let's see if we can add that over to here. All right, looks to me like it's going to work, but let's see. In fact, let's put a comment in all these. So let's here. Function to validate miles driven. Function to validate gallons used. Function to calculate. MPG as miles driven divided by gallons used. And this will print everything out. So let's see now if this thing to print everything out is working. Let's put a couple backslash ends in there just so it looks a little nicer. First, let's put in something that works. Oops, and I got to move my read line down again. There it is. It's all working. All right. If we put in something bad, It just set them both to one. All right. If we put the second one as zero. All right. It set our miles per gallon was zero rather than infinity. So the only thing that's left is to come in here and add that run program again. All right. But when we do the run program again, guess what? We're going to do it in a try catch block. So I'm going to put in here function to allow user to run program again or not. All right, so static bool because it's going to put that into that again variable. Run program again. We're going to, again, like we did before, have a string that's called yes or no. Set it equal to nothing. I want yes or no, not yes or not. We're going to have a char that we'll call first char. And that'll be, again, equal to the equivalent of the empty string, but the empty char, let's just say. And a bool retval which I'll set equal to true. And because I'm squirrely that way, I'm going to line those up. There we go. So now I'm going to go into a try block. And let's immediately just put a catch after this. Just so we don't get any errors. Now, don't worry. I guess we are getting one error, error there. It wants to know what kind of thing we're trying to catch. All right. We're going to do very similar to what we did before. What the heck does that mean? Well, remember before we grabbed this? Would you like to run the program again? All this? Other than the return ret value, have every bit of that, every bit of this. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and I'm going to paste it inside of my try. 
Same stuff we did before. All right. Now I'm going to catch, and it's a new kind of exception. It's called an index out of range exception. And if we catch that, so if we get that exception, all right, I'm again going to say right line. And we will say error. And. Input out of range exception dot message. And we will just set our return value. Equal to false so we can go on. And I'll put another read line there. And down here, we will return, not ret run, return ret val. Okay, my errors are all gone, my warnings are all gone. I want to run this and then show you why I did that. So first let's do a file save all. Okay, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do something that works. That's cool. Would you like to run the program again? I'm going to leave it blank. Error index was outside of the bounds of the array. That is that index out of range exception. Why? Because remember what we were trying to do in there is we were trying to set first char equal to the first character of whatever we entered for that read line up here, but we didn't enter anything. So it's attempting to take nothing, not nothing. It's attempting to grab something that doesn't exist. All right, null or whatever, and stuff it into first char and it doesn't work. Need this one. And I found that out the hard way because I didn't have it in there. All right, so we now have looked at three different, in about an hour and a half, we've looked at three different versions. One where we did put no air handling in and everything was in main. Another one where we did not allow bad data into the system ever. All right, and we handle that bad data ourselves we handled it all right by not letting it into the system to begin with with if statements etc and we used a while loop in there so we could run this continuously then a third time where we for the first time have seen the try catch all right i'm going to do one last file save all and i'm going to close every bit of this everything that's open has now been closed and i want to create this not that that's my granddaughter uh, I want to come in here and create this right now. We're going to create it twice. We're going to re run this twice. The first one is going to look similar to what we have been doing. All right, still to what we have been doing. in that we'll use a bunch of ifs and elses, et cetera. All right. And we'll put a little bit, just so we see it, of try catch in there as well. And then we're gonna run it again, where we'll use a lot of try catch. All right, plus we'll use some stuff that's actually in our textbook in chapter seven. All right, so, I hope to get these two done in about an hour. So let's get going. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to right mouse click on my solution, choose add new project. This will be a Windows form. 
There's my Windows Forms app.net. This one will be called MPG GUI 01. There it is. Probably don't have to make this much. I'll leave it the size it is. I'm going to do my squirrely things that I always do. I'm going to right mouse click and rename this. So I'm going to call it FRM MPG. We'll just call it 01 here. Yes, we want to change everything. All right. Uh, the text we had here was C sharp miles per gallon program GUI 01. C sharp miles per gallon program GUI GUI 01. So we've got that done. All right. Let's change the background color. Make it that color. And again, not a very complex interface here. We want three labels. So let's just bring one out first. Change the background color of it to make it darker. Change the foreground color of it. We'll make it white. All right, let's go set auto size. False. And there's our first one. A little bigger here. All right. That should be good. This one here, let's copy it twice. All right, let's put in three text boxes. And let's put in our three buttons. Nothing so far here. You know, all the stuff that we've been doing for quite a while now. All right. Let's change the size of our font as we have done several times already. At 24 bold and Arial. Evan wants to talk to me, so I just have to send him a quick reply. There we go. So we've got all that. Let's make these a little bit bigger. Again, I know I'm very squirrely about this stuff, but. All right, let's set up the stuff I set up right away. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make this my text align is just going to make it center. There's that. Take this and do the same thing. All right, so those two are done. Let's lock our interface into place. That's done. All right. This will be LBL miles driven. And it'll have the text on it, miles driven. This will be TXT miles driven. This will be LBL gallons used. So this again will be LBL gallons used, not user, used, and it will say gallons used.
And finally, this will be our miles per gallon. And I might have to make that a little wider. I don't know. Let's look. Miles per gallon. Yep. So let me move these over a little. So I'm going to unlock so I can move these over a bit. And I can widen these out. There we go. Those over. Again, you get a little squirrely, or I do at least, with my interfaces after a while. Lock that up again. There we go. So we've got LBL miles driven, TXT miles driven, LBL gallons used, TXT gallons used. And LBL mile gallon and TXT miles per gallon. All right, then our typical three buttons. This will be BTN calculate with the word calculate. This will be clear. And it will be BTN clear. And finally, this will be BTN exit. With the word exit on it. All right. I like to do, I'm going to come in here, make sure I've named, renamed everything. And it looks as though I have. Okay, so all that's done. I'm going to click on here, set my start position to center screen, set my accept button to BTN calculate, my cancel button to BTN clear, and finally my tab order. In fact, this is going to be, this one is going to be a read-only field. All right, so I'll set in my tab order, view tab order. It will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another view tab order, that's done. So this will be calculate in just a moment, clear in just a moment, and exit in just a moment. All right, for clear, I want to clear, 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 and focus. So we'll call our clear all. Okay, there is that. Let's do our exit by calling exit program or not. I have to grab this from an old program someplace. It's got a payroll here. Grab that.
there is exit program or not. Right. All right, so I should be able to check that stuff out. So file, save all. Oops, I did not set my start project. Now I have. All right, so clear works and exit works. Good. All right, there's a start. Now let's go and we're going to write this one. We're going to write this one, all right, as though we didn't know about exception handling yet. So we're going to write it, quote, the old fashioned way, unquote. All right, let me get rid of these. All right, and whoops, and let me again, as we did with our console, let me bring in these. I'm bringing in the um, program constants, okay? All right. I'm gonna actually add a, about three more program constants in here. You'll see why in a minute. They're all strings. The next one. All right. And then the last one. All right, I'm going to use these in my show message routine that we'll write in a little bit. All right, so. This is in our calculate. And I'm going to do it in a very similar way to what I've done in, in other programs. I'm going to have in here a bool. Keep going. All right. And I'm going to set it equal to. Valid. Miles. Validate miles driven. I get the error because, of course, that hasn't been written yet. So it's going to have to return a Boolean. So private bool validate miles driven. Okay. What does it like? It will keep going. Equal validate mile. Miles driven. There we go. All right. Again, this will be very similar to what we have been doing. I'll put a bool result in there. A bool ret val equal true. And a decimal miles driven. Okay. Very similar to what we have done before. Well, if we're going to say first, if txt miles driven dot text dot trim, if it's empty, check for no for no input 
in Miles Driven text box. So if that's the case, I'm going to call show message, which I haven't written yet, and I'm going to put in no value inputted for Miles Driven text box. And I want to put that NIIT message that I defined earlier. Well, we're going to get an error here, so let's write that show message. Private void show message. We've got a string that's got our message and another string with a title. A message box dot show with the message and the title. We also want our OK button. And we want this not to be a question, but to be an error. All right. So if we put nothing in. I want to be able to run this for now. I'm just going to type in return true. Return true just so that error goes away. This should now handle me putting nothing in there. So I'm going to say txt uh, txt miles driven dot focus. Let's see if we handle that now. OK, so I'm going to see if we've handled no input in our miles driven text box. There's nothing in there. No input in text box, no value inputted for miles driven text box. Good. And there's our focus. That's done. All right, that's a start. OK. And so we've got that if. Uh, and we got to return true down there. That's fine. But if if this is the case, I want to say here ret val equal false. I don't want to go on and I'm going to be returning here ret val. All right, so I've now checked for no input. So if I get down to here. There was input. All right. So. First check if input was numeric. So I'm going to put it else here. And I'm going to say result equals decimal dot try parse. TXT miles driven dot text. And out we're going to use miles driven. It's like all right again that can succeed or that can fail so if it fails I am going to call my show message. Grab all of this. There's a reason I'm doing it just like that. And rather than no input, I'm going to put non numeric input. And this was an NIIT non numeric input. Now notice I'm doing the same thing here and here. But the one thing is I do want to clear this. Like that, even though this is empty, we could clear it anyway. So I could say txt miles driven dot text equal nothing. I could do that. But notice if I do that, I've got this and I've got this and it's doing the same thing. So why don't we write a routine to do that? So let's write a routine. So private void, we'll call it clear and set focus to miles driven text box. Probably the longest name of any routine we've created so far. 
but I'm going to do this. I didn't save a lot, but I did save a little bit. Unlike something here. Oh, let's see. This thing need directive show potential fixes. What did I do wrong here? Private void. Clear and set. Focus there. Clear and set. Focus. I didn't put parent parent there. There we go. And I can do that same thing now. Right here. There we go. All right. So this was checking to see if the input was numeric. All right. Input was numeric. Make sure input is in range. So else. If. Miles driven. Is less than min miles or miles driven is greater than max miles. We again want to do virtually all of that stuff. But now not numeric input. We want out of range value. That should say value as well. And there you go. So I want that to be out of range. Okay. If we get down to the bottom right there, we can just return ret bell. Let's see if what we've done so far has worked. So file, save all. There's nothing in there. No input in text box. If we put garbage in there, non-numeric, which I spelled wrong again, input in text box. If we put something out of range, range input in text box. All right. Well, good. Let's make that one change there. That should say non-numeric. There you go. All right. So we've got that. Now. We just wrote our validate miles driven again, so you don't have to watch me type a lot. I don't normally do this. I would normally rewrite this from scratch, but I'm not going to. I'm going to call this validate gallons used, and I'm going to start making changes. So this will now be gallons used. We didn't write this routine yet, so that's going to have to be fixed in a minute.
All right. Copy this. All right, and I've got no errors, which is great. All right, but now I've called this, so if. Keep going. Now we can say keep going. Oh, validate gallons used. Else return. All right, now it doesn't like something we're doing in here. Oh, it's all oh, those errors are gone. Oh, I could have in my copy and pasting. I could have screwed something up. You know me well enough by now. Let's see what we got though. All right, nothing. No input in text box. Miles driven. Garbage. No non numeric. Out of range. All right, now it should go the other way. So no, no input text box, gallons used, there it is. Non-numeric gallons used, there it is. Out of range gallons used, there it is. Out of range gallons used. Okay, it's all working. The only thing is if I put this in, my calculate isn't yet doing the actual calculation. All right, so we have now validated the miles driven. We have validated the gallons used. All right, so we can come in here. And. So there's the miles driven, there's the gallons used. So if keep going. We can now call. Calculate. MPG, OK. And let's see. I don't think we're going to need to pass anything into it. We'll see in a minute. Else. Return. Technically, we it's right at the end. We probably don't even need a return there, but let's call our calculate MPG. All right, now we're going to have three things in here. Decimal, miles, we'll say miles driven, and that's going to be equal to, we've already, we know it's a number already, so we can just say convert dot to decimal txt miles driven dot text. That should never fail. Another decimal, gallons used, and that'll again be a convert dot to decimal txt gallons used dot text. All right. All right, now I am going to use a try catch in here because it's possible that's zero. All right, or, you know, I'm, I'm going to, well, you'll see right now. I'm going to put a try in here. Now, to be as, I don't even know what the word is. Probably as write this as well as possible. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say here. Come on, Jeff. Miles. 
good gravy. Miles driven equal. Oh, I don't even need that there. I'm going to do it there. And here I'm going to say gallons used equal. I'm just going to grab this. There. Now I've got miles driven and I've got gallons used. All right, so I've got everything that I need there. Now I want to say here MPG equal miles driven divided by gallons used. The problem is could be zero. I think we've already handled that, but just in case. All right. And then we're going to attempt to come in here and say TXT miles per gallon dot text equals mpg dot two string and we'll put it again to two decimal places all right i'm going to try to catch two different things here a format exception And if that happens, I'll do my show message. And I will pass to it. Error. Plus. F E dot message. And I could have written something else here. I'm, I, I'm just going to put here for a title illegal input. All right. So that'll catch a format exception. Let's also come in and catch a divide by zero exception. We'll call that one again a DBZE. And we'll say there illegal divide by zero. That should be everything. Let's see if it works. Um. So let's run it. Publics. No, we're already catching that in here um, so technically since we're catching that zero way up here uh, the gallons used um, and out of range we don't really need to check it uh we really don't need to check it then in our calculate MPG, but doesn't hurt. All right, so we've got that. I'm going to write one more of these. Keep this open for two reasons. First, I'm going to copy all this, but I am going to create a new application here. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to drink a little water and I drank too fast. So let's add a new project that will again be a Windows form. This then will be MPG GUI 02. All right, I'm going to immediately.
is that it? There we go. I don't like those colors together, so I'm going to make that a dark, darker purple. That's better. <clears throat> so I think I've got all this stuff set as far as my names. All right. And uh, let's see. On the other one that we just did. See for the text. This will be this, but it'll be GUI 02. So that's done. <clears throat> we have to reset the start position. We have to reset our accept and cancel buttons. We want to rename the form. The other form was named. FRM MPG 01. So we will rename this form to FRM MPG 02. And yes, we want to change everything. Let's go in and change the tab order. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. Another view tab order. Double click on our calculate button. Double click on our clear button. Oops. Double click on our exit button. We should be able to copy that code in. So let's see if we can. So there's our clear. That didn't copy for some reason. And we want to do our exit button. All right, so we should have all that done. So let's double check. Oops, I have to reset my start project. All right, calculate won't do anything yet. Clear works. Exit works, good. All right, so let's do this last one. Now, in doing this, last example here, I am going to do it a little bit differently. All right, and what I mean is I'm going to bring in some stuff that was shown in chapter seven in the book. I want to say that again, I'm going to bring in some stuff that was shown in chapter seven in the book. All right, so we haven't gotten there yet, but we will. All right, so first let me get rid of the junk we don't need. Oh, we do need the system windows forms. Let me go in here and again grab this. Where we brought in our. I don't know if I'm going to use. I think in here I didn't use these strings for whatever reason. I just didn't do it that way. Let's just grab these. All right, so we've now we've got our constants in there. OK, now I'm just ready to start, period. OK, so I'm in the calculate. I'm going to do this differently, as I mentioned, and I'm going to write it in a similar manner 
to the way they wrote it in the book. And in particular, so if you're watching this and you want to bring up your book as well, I don't think it's going to go on this, but let's see. Nope. Let's go to here. I think it's page 219. We'll find out in just a moment. I am going to incorporate into this program this is present method, the is decimal method, the is within range method, all three methods that are shown on page 219. In, and also from earlier, I am going to add, not there, maybe it is later. I am going to bring in and validate multiple entries kind of the way they did it here. All right, which will bring us hopefully a little closer to what we're going to want to do when we get into chapter seven. All right, so in my calculate here. I'm going to have a string then I'm going to call MSG for message and set it equal to the empty string. I'm going to have a decimal. Let's just call these miles and gallons just to keep it simple. Yeah, we'll call it miles driven and gallons used. That's fine. We'll set that equal to zero M. And we'll have a gallons used and we'll set that equal to zero M. And because again, I'm very squirrely. There we go. All right. Now again, what I'm doing now, it's going to be very similar to what they did in the book on those pages I just showed you. All right. Don't need this anymore, so I'm going to move that over. There we go. So I'm going to do a try here. And I'm going to call a routine I haven't written yet. That's called. Is valid data. It's going to give me an error message because we don't have a routine yet. That's called is valid data. All right, so miles. Driven. Equal. Convert dot to decimal. TXT miles driven dot text. Gallons used. Equal. Convert dot to decimal. TXT gallons used dot text. And calculate MPG passing it miles driven and gallons used. Now this one for now, I'm just going to comment this out. OK. And if we had any errors. I'm just going to try to catch a generic exception, so I'm going to say catch. Exception. EX. And if I get that, I'm going to call my show message, which I probably haven't written yet. And it's going to let's put, let's put in this dollar sign thing that we've been using. So dollar sign. And we'll say. Error. MSG. And then on a new. In. EX dot message and we'll put in another couple new lines. Don't really need that, but that's fine. And it'll say on here. Error messages. All right, let's quickly write that show message routine. In fact, let's steal it from what we had earlier. So I'm just grabbing my own code, so copy that. And underneath our exit program or not, I'll just throw that in there. There we go. All right. So now is valid data, not is valid date. All right, so. As you'd probably guess, the next thing to do is to really come in and write that is valid data. 
we're going to write that. It's going to call three other routines that we haven't written yet. Is present, is decimal, is, is within range. Now, the key to doing this and having it work is what I'm about to show you. I may have shown you this the other day. I do not remember. But I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on here in that text box. And right up above the text field, there's a field called tag. And I'm going to type in there, miles, miles driven. Then I'm going to go down to the next one. And I'm going to type in there, in the tag, gallons used. All right. And if you don't know why, you will in a couple minutes. All right. So we've got all this stuff. But now we have to write our is valid data. So private bool is valid data. I no longer have an error there, but since I'm not returning anything and I said it was a bool, I've got an error here. All right. So I'm going to come in here. I'm taking this right from your book. String error message equals nothing. Then I'm going to say validate the miles text box. All right, and I'm going to say error message plus equal is present txt miles driven dot text. miles driven txt miles driven this is not going to make a boatload of sense until i've written it and we've gone over it all right so bear with me after calling is present we'll want to call is decimal and then after that we'll want to call is is within range. When we call is within range, we have to give it an upper and a lower range. So our upper range will be, our lower range will be min miles, and our upper range will be max miles. And then we need this. Now, I did this a little bit differently than what's in the book. So you might say, fine, why the heck did you do that? Why? Because believe it or not, I tried to make this easier for you to understand. All right, I would definitely do some rewrite and I may end up doing a little bit in class in just a bit. So if error message not equal to nothing means we had errors, I'm going to call show message. All right, this is going to check to make sure there's something in that text box that is there something present in there or not. This is going to check to see if the value that was put in there is a decimal or not. And this is going to go and check to see if that value in that text box is one and 1,000. Now, as you probably guess, we haven't yet written those. These are taken right from your book, except I had to add something.
I did something in here that I thought was really cool. You may or may not agree as we go through this and look at it in just a minute, okay? I should say value. All right. Let's see, so clear and then control, yeah, return message. All right, we're gonna have to write this. We'll write it in just a moment, okay? Bear with me. Right. Finally, we got it to our within range. Right, we're getting there. All right. Context. 
So is within range is All right, I've, I'm, we're almost done, <clears throat> but it's going to take a while, as you'd probably guess, to, uh, to read up there to go over all this with you. <clears throat> it's just about finished. All I have to do is write the actual routine now for calculating the. So you got if is valid. Do this, do this. Now I just want to do this. So I want to call calculate MPG. Then we'll spend a bit of time, as you probably guess, going over this. And this is a decimal. And this is a decimal. Now, I put in a boatload of code here. Let's first just see if it works. Or if I've got any errors in here whatsoever. So. All right, miles driven must be, so that's wrong. So there's an error in here. That's okay, we're gonna fix all of it. Okay, let's go through this from the top. I'm going to take for granted that by now, I no longer have to explain this exit program or not to you, and that you also understand the clear function. I'm just taking for granted that you get those. All right, so let's take a look at the new stuff. All right, so first we've got in here our constants. That is not new. We've had those constants from before. All right, so there's nothing new there. Now, when you come in here and you click the calculate button, all right, we've got three variables. Message, which is going to be possibly an error message, miles driven and gallons used, and you know what those are. So what we're attempting to do in here is to validate the miles used, to validate I'm sorry, to validate the miles driven, 
to validate the gallons used and to then calculate our miles per gallon. Any of these three statements in lines 30, 31, or 32 can conceivably fail. All right, and if they do fail, they do fail, we don't want to go on. All right, so let's look at these. OK, let's look at is valid data. What does this do? All right, it's got this is a possible error message we can have. Now, if we leave miles, if we leave our miles driven empty, ideally, we're going to get three error messages. Let's see if we do. Leaving it empty. Well, we've got error. Miles driven is a required field. Miles driven must be a decimal value, and it's never checking to see whether or not it's within range. All right. Now there's a problem in here. I don't know what it is, but where it's saying here, miles driven must be between one and a thousand. Mistaken there. We'll fix that right now. So what are we doing again? This is present is checking for the presence or the absence of the field miles driven. This is the name of the text box we want to change. We want to check. That's the that's the value. That's the what's in the text box. This is that tag we gave it miles driven. This right here is that tag we gave it. Right there, miles driven, this. All right. So what we're doing in here then is we're saying, call this is present routine. Have it check the text in this text box, and that text has that this tag, and it has got that it that is the name of the control. Then we're going to check to make sure it's numeric, same way, and finally we're going to check to make sure. All right, that it's min miles max miles, again within range in that case. At any time we could have errors that are going to be in here, and if we do show those errors at the end. So let's look. So here's is present. This is taken right from the book, except for this thing on the end, and I'll explain that when we're finished here. So we say if the value we could trim it even. All right, we could say if value dot trim, we could do that. If it's equal to nothing, it's going to say that this is a required field. Then notice we're calling clear and set correct control, set focus to correct control, and we're passing it in the name of the control, which is this. Why did I do that? If you remember previously, we wrote this. We had two routines. One that was clear and set focus to miles driven text box. The other one is called clear and set focus to gallons used text box. All right. I took those two routines, not a lot. I mean, each routine is what? One, two, three, four, five lines. So 10 total lines. And I compressed it down into one routine of five lines, but it has to know what control we're working with. So that is TXT miles driven, or that is TXT gallons used. That's the name of the control. All right, so we're first coming in and checking for the presence or absence of a value in the text box. Then we're checking to make sure that the value that's in the text box is a decimal value.
And notice I use that discard in here. We're not doing anything with this value. All right, but it said it, it should say that must be a valid decimal value. And this, which isn't working right now, and I don't know why. Put this on multiple lines so you can see all of it. This is the value we're checking in the text box. So we've got a value, a name. One of them is the, I think that's the tag name. I don't remember, but we're going to check it in just a minute. This is the minimum value we're expecting, the maximum value we're expecting, and the name of our control. So when we call it here, we're passing in the min miles, which is one. We are passing in the max miles, which is 1,000. And then we're coming in here and we're checking and we're saying is the range. I'm making a wrong check. That's why this isn't working. All right. So if the number that we passed in, all right, the, we just parse that into. OK, that value is what's in the text box. All right, if that number that we just tried to parse, if it's less than our minimum, or that number is greater than the maximum, so we're doing a range tech or a range check right there. Now, according to Visual Studio, I'm putting in too many curly braces. I like it like like that. All right, let's try it now. And notice if I come in here and I leave this blank, I should get three error messages. Well, two, how's that? I, I get that miles driven is a required field and I get that miles driven must be a valid decimal value. All right, let's let's put in something out of range. And I get miles driven must be between one and a thousand. All right, so all that's working. Let's try doing the same thing, but for the gallons used. Gallons used is required field. Gallons used must be a decimal value. And if I put in something out of range, Gallons used must be between one and 100. When I put in all valid stuff, it works. I can clear, I can exit. Good gravy. So what this did, maybe this wasn't the best way to introduce this to you, but it's the way that I chose to introduce this to you. And that is, all right, I came in here, I came in here and brought in the material that was in the textbook on pages around page 219. In addition, I showed you how you can write a generic routine and pass an entire control into that routine and then tell it to take that control and remove any of its text and set the focus to it, which is kind of cool, I think. All right, again, you're going to get all these. So let me do a file, save all. And let me just close and close and close and close. Try it again and close. So. I have written five programs so far today. You will get all of them, but let's jump back into the book now. You may or may not have noticed, I am not taking any breaks.
my hope is I'm going to go on until 12 noon and we'll see how much of this we can get done. When I create these tapes, the tapes after four hours stop and a new tape begins. I'm going to see if I can get this done by 12. I don't think I can, but I want to do the best I can. So right now I'm going to start going through the book and in particular in the book, I'm going to jump back to page 201. Why? Because that begins our journey into chapter seven. How to handle exceptions. So that's the try catch and how to validate data. And I just showed you that in the last program. Now, one of the things that you're going to get also today. I'm not going to go over it right now but I've gone back to that payroll application that we had created. You may or may not remember this, so I want to show it to you. So it looks like this. Okay, you can put in a first name, a last name, all that good stuff. But I have gone back into it, put in a try catch here, and added the is present. And all the other good stuff. All right, so I took basically what I just showed you and put it into this particular example. I will tell you right now, and if you don't like what I'm going to say, I'm sorry in advance. If you are not reading the material, you really should be reading the material, reading chapter seven in this case, before going through the tape. I am meant to supplement what is in your book. I cannot re regurgitate everything that's in this book back to you. I'm grabbing what I consider to be the most important information. All right. And if you're not understanding anything and you're not asking, you have not, you've got no one to blame but yourself. All right. If something doesn't make sense, you must come back and question me about it. All right. So let's get going. So this is broken down into an intro to exceptions. How to use structured exception handling. We've covered both of those, believe it or not. How to validate data, which we just looked at. And the future data of or future value app with data validation. They're actually going to do it twice, once with exception handling and once with data validation. All right. I don't know if we even have a future value or where I even put that future value stuff. I need to do much better than I am doing at naming my stuff. I have anything in here called future value? Well, I've got this. That is not it. So we'll see if we can find that. Okay. All right. It says before you learn how to handle exceptions, it's important for you to understand how they work. Again, when you get an exception in the program, if you do not handle the exception yourself, the system will handle the exception for you. More than 99 times out of 100, the way it will handle the exception for you is it'll stop the program and spit the exception at you so you can see what went wrong. Now, they mentioned in this graph here on page 202, it's inevitable that sooner or later, the applications that you write will encounter exceptions for a lot of different reasons. If the system doesn't understand it, if you have not accounted for it, the .NET runtime environment will throw an exception. Now, when you look at these exceptions, and this is not a good picture they show here, it's up a few pages, I believe. Well, I thought they showed it. Maybe they don't. That's OK.
because I don't want to waste my time or yours looking for it. But one of the things that may be worth your time to do is to go out to learn.microsoft.com. All right, and type in here something like built in C sharp exceptions. All right, exceptions. There's a whole programming guide. Here's on how to show how to use throw, try, catch, and finally, which we haven't talked about yet. All right, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I'm looking for a listing of the exceptions, and I don't know if they're even in here. 21 exceptions. So here are some. It says the following exceptions are thrown by some C sharp operations. Arithmetic operation. Array type divide by zero index out of range. I've shown you some of these. These are not all of them. All right, I know I did this before and I can't remember where I found it. But I want a listing of all C sharp. Built in exceptions. Complete list of exception class. All right. So take a look, because they're in alphabetic order. I don't know how many are in here. I don't care how many are in here. When you start putting in your code, you can account for as many or as few of these exceptions as you want to or need to do. All right. Now it says here a well coded app will catch exceptions that might be thrown and handle them. What they're saying here is a, in, a, in a well coded app, you will add exception handling yourself so that you can handle any exceptions that happened that happen rather than having the computer itself handle those exceptions. All right. Exceptions that have not been handled. If you remember, when we first started today, I wrote that very simple console app with everything in main. And when we did it, we found, get rid of that, I don't need this, these two exceptions, a system.format exception, not divide by zero exception. I wanted to show you those because sometimes putting and running the program and purposely generating errors, you can go in and see the kind of error that you want to code for, that you want to handle. Okay. Not sure what happened right there, but okay. There are all sorts of exceptions. When you throw multiple exceptions, you've got to throw the most specific ones first and the most general ones last. If you don't get that, you will shortly. All right. This is something similar to when we ran our programs before and we generated that exception. So what they're saying here is. Here's some exceptions. All right, now this may or may not make sense to you, but you can kind of read it as like a hierarchy chart. Where. Maybe that is a COO. Or let's say that's the president. That's a vice president. That's a vice president. And these are people underneath that vice president. All right. In the same way, 
an overflow exception and a divide by zero exception are more specific exceptions than an arithmetic exception. An arithmetic exception is a more specific exception than exception itself. What that means is, if I want to check for all five of these exceptions that are shown right here, if I want to catch all five of them, first near the top, I've got to catch these two. Then at the next level, I catch these two. Then at the bottom, I catch that one. They go from the most specific to less specific to the least specific. They mention here that anytime you're doing converts, convert dot to decimal, convert dot to in 32 or parses, whether it be a decimal dot parse or a parse, etc. But now we're not doing the tri parse where we're using, we're doing a regular decimal dot parse, not a tri parse. Good, bad, or indifferent, one of the things that C sharp gives you are multiple ways of doing the same thing, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. All right. So they start out real slow here. Remember we talked before about the kind of crawl, walk, run mentality. So what they're showing here is, this is just a message box. It says, if you get an error, this is what you could do. I don't know why I show you this. I've already shown you the material from chapter 10 for a message box. You've been using it already. When you use structured, exception handling. This is using the try catch block. All right, where you've got one try in which you put in one or more lines of code that can conceivably fail. One or more catch blocks in case something in the try block fails so you can handle it. In addition, and I didn't show you this, there's also a finally block that always runs. Whether the try succeeds and you totally skip the catch or whether the try fails and you do the catch, the finally always runs. The finally is typically used for housekeeping operations. When we get to chapter 17, I mean, we're uh, right now we're on seven, so in 10 chapters from now, and we talk about files and how you open and close and write to files and read from files, et cetera. In a finally block, you would probably close your files. When we get to chapters 19, 20, 21, and 22, we'll talk about databases. And when we talk about databases, all right, you open up a database when you want to start working with it. You close the database when you're done with it. Well, if some of that work involves using exception handling in the finally block, you'd probably make sure that the database was closed. All right. So to use exception handling, there it is. I've already shown you this. In the try, you put one or more statements that can conceivably fail. I want to say that again. In your try block, which is between the curly braces, after the word try, you put in one or more statements that can conceivably fail. Now, this is a dumb example, in my opinion, that they're showing here because they're not catching anything specific. After the catch, you virtually always have something, and that is the type of error you're trying to catch. So you'll notice here what? This is supposed to be numeric, but they put XX in here and then they try to convert it to a number. So you get please enter a valid number in the subtotal field. That's from right here. So, as mentioned, you can use a try catch statement to code an exception handler that catches and handles any exceptions that are thrown. 
you can code a try block around any statements that can possibly throw an exception. Then you can code a catch block or several catch blocks that contain the statements to be executed when the exception is thrown. If you have multiple catches, the system goes and looks in the first one that it says, oh, that's a match. It does that one and it skips the rest. Just so you're aware of that. How to use the properties and methods of an exception. I actually showed you this. I use that message prop. That's a brief description of the message itself. So when something doesn't work, that's kind of a summary of what it is. All right, I did not use stack trace. I did not use get type. If you can imagine that you have a program that you write, let's say that it has four functions in it. Fun you've got function one and function one does some stuff and then it calls function two. Function two does some stuff and then it calls function three. Function three does some stuff and then it calls function four. Now you're in function four and you get an error. The stack trace will show you, okay, function four was called and then, then it'll show you where in function three function four was called. Then it'll show you where in function two function three was called. Then it'll show you where in function one function two was called. It's got a listing of all of the functions, how they how one called the other, etc. And it is in a last to first order. A stack race. It shows you the type of exception you have. And they give you some examples here. Now, typically, you're not going to ever print out a stack trace unless you're writing a program and you're debugging it or testing it and you can't figure out why a certain line of code isn't working. Then you might want to print it out. All right. So if you want to use the properties or methods of the exception in the catch block, you must supply a name for the exception. The stack traced again is the list of methods that were called before the exception occurred. The list again is in what's called a LIFO order. That is, the last one called is the first one outputted. Like I said at the end, two vice or two workers under the same vice president. They must go from the most specific to the most general. This is a, an actual uh, picture of what the syntax is supposed to look like, albeit not a great picture. 